Today's project involves using water-soluble oil pastels. You're going to be filling an 18 by 24 piece of paper with five different flowers. Um, the rule for today's project is that you must draw from observation. You may not just draw them right out of your head. So that means you have to look at something and observe what it looks like and try and reproduce it on the paper only larger. So I have some sheets of paper that have various different types of drawings on them. Some of them are photographs, some of them are step-by-step -step instructions, some of them are black and white uh, coloring pages. And I'm trying to observe what they look like and draw the flowers. I'm drawing them as big as possible, so I fill the page, and I'm also overlapping them. Overlapping means that one of the flowers is going to hide behind another flower, and another flower is going to cover on top of another flower so that you get the idea that there's a bunch of flowers. Some are in front and some are in back. So notice how I'm going to the lines that I already drew and I'm uh, stopping at the edge of them and I'm starting at the edge of lines I already drew and coming out from behind them to give the illusion uh, that one flower is in front of another flower. And in that way I'm going to fill my page with five different flowers. When I'm done, I'm going to be using oil pastels, but these are water-soluble oil pastels, which means that after I'm done blending the colors, I can take a paintbrush and water, and I can uh, manipulate the color even further. Um, so I'm going to start out with uh, the different color families. So my first flower is going to be colored using red, orange, and yellow. I start out with the darkest color closest to the center of each petal, the, the part of the petal that's closest to the center of the flower. And I color in a zigzag motion, and then I gradually switch to the later colors. The trick is you don't end the color with a hard edge. You, um, you kind of press down and lift up as you get farther away from the center of the petal, and then the lighter color, you actually color over the darker color, so you have a blending where the two colors meet. Um, the other trick, very, very important, is to stay inside each petal. Each petal gets colored separately. If you try and color the entire flower at once, uh, it has the unfortunate side effect of looking like a blob and not like a flower. So what you do is you're going to outline each petal with the darkest color. You're going to uh, use the darkest color at the base of the petal where it's nearest the center of the flower. You're going to gradually get lighter. And when you paint, you're going to be painting uh, with the water in the direction that the petal goes in, from the center of the petal out or from the edge of the petal in, and you're going to not cross over the lines. Each petal gets colored separately, each color gets painted separately. It's when you try and color the entire flower at once that it ends up looking like a blob. The other very, very important trick is to only blend colors that you absolutely know will look good together. For instance, here I am blending purple and blue and white, and it's working because red and blue make purple, so I know that blue goes with purple. Adding white and to purple will just make it later. Now when I go ahead and paint this petal, I'm going to either go from the edge of the petal towards the middle, or I'm going to blend the colors with water by going from the darkest part of the petal, the middle, towards the edge. I'm not going, allowed to go in any other direction, and I'm not allowed to paint outside that petal. Um, if you try and paint the entire flower at once, again, you'll lose the definition of the petals. So here I have outlined all the petals with the darkest color. Now I'm going into the middle part of each petal that's nearest the center of the petal with the darkest color. I'm coloring a zigzag motion. Now I've blended it with the lighter blue. Now I'm blending it with white and then I'm going to very carefully paint it to further blend the colors. If you lose the definition of the outline because you accidentally go over the line, you can wait till the paper dries a little bit and then you can reapply more oil pastel um, to uh, get the definition back.
You can see when I go ahead and paint that I'm very careful to stay right inside the lines. Um, I just, I'm, I'm trying to actually spread out a little bit of the dark color into the lighter areas, spread a little of the light color into the darker areas, and I just paint very lightly so I'm moving the paint around without ripping the paper. Um, just very gently moving the color around a little bit. This only really works if you press hard with the color and you've laid a lot of color onto the paper. If you don't have enough color on there, then the scrubbing action of the paintbrush will merely rip the paper. Um, again, it only takes a little bit of water. Here are the color combinations that go well together. Red and white go very beautifully together. Red, orange, and yellow go very beautifully together. Rust and peach actually go very nicely together. Uh, blue and, and light blue and dark blue go beautifully together. Dark and light green go beautifully together. And violet with white and light blue go beautifully together. Um, it's important to stick to color combinations that you know will work. The nice thing about this project is when you put all these overlapping flowers next to each other, because each flower uses a different grouping of colors. Um, it's easy to distinguish one flower from the other. Um, each flower looks very distinct even though they're overlapping and all bunched together because each one uses a different color family.